Hey guys, so originally I was planning on making this video about the sails that would go on this rig, but you guys posted such really good questions about rigging that would go on this model that I decided I'm going to cover all of those first, and then after that, then we'll make sails for the setup, and we'll go over how the sails would work in all of it. The first question I'm going to cover on this is masthead rig versus fractional rig. Now this is most seen on sloops because it's a racing thing. So, what is the, like, at, at its core, it's really simple. A masthead rig has the head stay go up to the masthead. A fractional rig doesn't make it to the masthead. So a fractional rig is some fraction of the mast. So you'll hear nine-tenths, three-quarters, all these different numbers, it's seven-eighths. It's literally how far up the mast. So a nine-tenths fractional rig is literally nine-tenths of the way up the mast. A seven-eighths is seven-eighths of the way up the mast. A three-quarters is three-quarters of the way up the mast, on and on. Why? As I mentioned in the previous video about how you can adjust the head stay tension on a cutter versus a sloop and how it's so much more effective because you get such better leverage on a sloop with the mast further forward and the head stay being more vertical. Well, the same thing happens with a fractional rig. So right now, I actually have this set as a cutter. Apologies. Instant sloop. Instant sloop. So what you have is the head stay comes to a very sharp angle up here. So the angle of it to the mast is super short. And then the backstay angle is quite large. So what this means is now the backstay has a whole bunch of leverage to pull and really tighten the headstay. How could you take that one further? You already have it forward so you can really tighten this headstay up. But if you could simply attach the headstay lower on the mast, this section of mast then becomes leverage plus the backstay to really crank down on the head stay. And then to take it one further, you'll see on racing boats what they call a truck. So the masthead unit, the thing with the shivs and all that stuff, that's called a truck. But on racing boats, the truck will stick out like a good foot or two feet behind the mast. So then the backstay attaches to a thing way out here, gives it a ton of leverage, plus the mast itself, all attaching to the head stay. So let's convert to a fractional rig. Now we have a fractional rig. So you can see the backstay comes to the head of the mast because that's how they do. And the headstay doesn't. It goes up a fraction of the mast. So now when we tighten on the mast on the backstay, it really really cranks down on the headstay and it really bends the mast. So what this does is it makes the mast extra bendy. So this is a very popular thing on racing sailboats with a deck step because you can see how it just like bends like crazy. If it's keel stepped, imagine that this is the keel and the deck is somewhere say here. It's a lot less bendy because now you have the keel, a mast deck partner, and you'd also have spreaders by the way. But this is literally going from a zero spreader setup to a one spreader setup. So each point of attachment on the mast stiffens the mast up. Now. I know you guys said I don't have shrouds and this is a very incomplete rig, like you'd have lowers and all that stuff. The reason I'm doing it with the bare minimum to keep this stick mostly upright is to simplify things. Because if we start throwing in, oh, the intermediates and the lowers and, you know, the baby stays and the check stays, it gets confusing. Like at that point, I might as well just point at a real sailboat and be like, this is how it works. Like it's still confusing because it's rigging. It's a lot going on in there. But when we simmer it down to its bare minimum, this is what you get. So at a fractional rig, it's very bendy. So you have all of this leverage cranking down the headstay. You can get it really tight. And since this isn't opposing up here, you can induce bend very easily because when you pull back on the backstay, the thing that's opposing it is further down. So right here, it's going to flip. And as this flips back, this is going to bend forward. And when you do that, you change everything in your sail plan. So we're going to cover that when we put sails on this boat. If I can make the sails properly. I'm not a sail maker. What happens when your sail is cut? It's actually cut assuming that the mast is going to have bend to it, because it's supposed to, and assuming that your head stay is going to sag somewhat, because it's supposed to. If you had everything bar tight, the boat would break. 
the sailmaker builds in a nice belly into the sail, and that helps give it draft. And then that draft is what actually gives it power. So if you have, if you look at a, an airplane wing, they have that curvature to them because it is an airfoil, and obviously that's how they work. So sails are the same thing. They're simply wings vertically. So it needs to have that curvature to it to give it an airfoil to give it draft and then give it lift. So the sailmaker puts in a certain amount of belly into the sail. When you bend the mast, all that belly that used to be in this area now has to get pulled forward because the mast bent forward and it like pulled away. So then that actually flattens the sail. Now a flatter sail does a couple things. It can cut into the wind better because you're looking we're going to go over this more in detail when we cover sails, but I'm going to go over it really, really basically. So I'm going to use this thing that may or may not become a mizzen in future videos, say for catches and yawls. You're laying on the boat looking straight up at your sail. It doesn't look like a big sheet of cloth in the, mo in the air anymore. Now it looks like this. So you guys are laying down looking straight up and this is the sail you see. Here's the leading edge of the sail, and here's the trailing edge of the sail. If the sail looks like this, nothing's going to happen because it's totally flat. So air's going to flow on both sides and nothing's going to happen. So the sail maker puts a belly into the sail, okay? So what happens is air is going to flow at different rates, and you're going to have a low pressure side on this side and a high pressure side on this side. And this low pressure side is going to pull the sail this way because it's trying to pull it into the vacuum that's been created. That's it. So the sailmaker puts a bend into this, or puts a belly into the sail, and then this is called, uh, the amount of belly is called draft, and this length is called cord. These are all terms that we'll go over when we cover sails. What happens is, you, this creates power. Now if it's really windy, you don't need all the power that this is going to make. It's too much. So you can either A, reef, which makes your sails smaller, or you could just depower your sail. So what happens is the mast is attached here, right? And if you can pull the mast forward, the sail flattens out. So that is what you're doing. You pull the mast forward right here, and then it flattens your sail out. That means that you can still have the same amount of sail and not have to reef and not be overpowered. Now this, this is like, like the half reef, like if it's that bad, and it's still pulling you over and everything, and you have to reef. You can't just crank yourself flat and ignore the wind. On to the fractional rig. That is the big thing. It gives you a bend to your mast, more ability to tune your mast, which then gives you more ability to tune your sails, which then gives you more ability to sail in higher performance. So, fractional rig gives you more ability. Now, you will see fractional rig on racing sailboats where people are out there tuning everything if you're cruising eh, I mean all right like let's be honest I have a backstage Esther I set it for the general course that we're going we're going upwind I tighten it we're going downwind I loosen it I am not out there adjusting it every 10 seconds that thing is set and it's set for like the next trip on a cruising boat you, you know this is a lot of work and and therefore it's not a thing that gets done much. So, that is why you see fractional rigs on racing boats and not so much on cruising boats. Because cruising boats are also built a lot heavier. Like, there's no cruising boat that you're going to see. Well, shouldn't say no because everyone can cruise on anything. So, most cruising boats that you see will not have a super bendy, flimsy little mast. They're going to have something that looks like a tree coming out of their boat and it's going to be stout and strong and, you know, hardly bends because it's cruising it's gonna get beat up and there's really nowhere to get repairs when you're in these places so you need something that's going to last to get you there and get you out of there so that's why most cruising boats you hear are cutters or really heavy old boats and stuff like that but the other reason that they're really old heavy boats is heavy old boats are cheap that's why we have one another really good question that got posed that I want to address about the cutters and sloops business because fractional rigs are pretty much only in sloops. Now the question was why can't you just take your staysail which attaches here and call it a fractional rig? Well the issue is 
your staysail, so I got one right here, comes up to here, right? But you still have your head stay that goes to the top. So the only way you could actually convert your cutter rig to a fractional rig would be to remove the head stay, which you don't want to do that. Do not do that because it's not designed to be done that way. Uh, there's a reason that there's a head stay and an inner force stay. They don't call it the inner, they don't call it the head stay and the outer stay. So that's the, the big difference between a fractional rig sloop and a masthead rig sloop. It's simply where does the head stay attach and what fraction of the way up is it or is it all the way at the top and then in that case it's a masthead sloop. In our next video, I'm going to be covering, because I'm filming all of these at once, because <laughs> we're heading back to the boat soon and this model is not going to the boat, so I gotta film them all now while we're still in the States. So, the next video is going to be about cutters, slutters, and solents. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.